Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reality Realness with three S's. I'm your host, Chantel Francis, and we're all back here together to talk about All Star Season 4. Finally, episodes one and two. And with me is Michelle. How's it going, Michelle? First thoughts, first feelings. Oh, man, it's so good. Um, everything, everything. I especially love the first episode. And then the second episode really provided, obviously, a lot of drama. Um, which we'll get into, but uh, I love the mix of this cast. I love the editing. I love the song choices. I love um, what the challenges. I love TJ, loving them. I just love all of it. <laughs> love, 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 love. And there's no love lost here with Matthew and Kifla. How are you, Matthew? And what's going on with your background? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I loved this... Um, this two episodes, I mean, the first episode of all stars is always so much fun because you just get all these people that really want to be there and certain people that are just so happy to have another opportunity. And then there's like the nostalgia factor, like people that I necessarily don't even remember. Um, so I always love the premiere of all stars. It's just like very fun and uh, low stakes almost. Um, and then kind of like Michelle said, like second episode, really started to pick up uh kifla i i'm obsessed <laughs> with kifla so i i basically just tweeted a picture of kifla and i was like i love this guy hashtag the challenge i didn't even tag him i didn't i didn't even know he was on twitter to be honest um and i get a response last night saying like i love you back so um <laughs> him, me and kifla are, um we're tight now new besties what would your if you were to be going on to the challenge all stars say five what would your tagline name be you and kifla i mean we've got the bffs already we've got the besties so it's got to be well uh i guess father and adopted son <laughs> father and adopted son well do you know what let's just get into that because what i'm loving about all stars is a i'm just sitting there smiling like an idiot by myself like watching the show i'm just having such a good time with everything that's going on um i don't know it's the, if it's because the the paramount plus is just not taking it itself so seriously even though you know we have tj saying like it's the fifth sport and like really really going with that with like vibe but like it's just not taking itself so seriously. And I'm just enjoying it so much more than I enjoyed 39. Yeah, Absolutely. honestly. Like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, you go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say like, for me, when I watch All Stars, it feels like I'm watching the first 12 seasons of the show. And even though the people are obviously much older than when, when they were in the early 2000s, because Back then, a lot of these people were like 18 to like 25. Like 25 would be old. Now, like some of these people are 50. But <laughs> it, still, it still feels like those early years that were just so much more fun and didn't take itself so seriously. And there is obviously still a lot of strategy. Like it's more physical, even all stars. But it just feels way fresher than... Uh, the main series where it just leans way too heavy into the sport side of things. Um, so Mike here is saying, hi, Mike. I keep us having such a good showing his first two episodes. Makes me feel vindicated on voting him in on Chantal's team in the draft. Okay. You're going to take credit for that. Are you also going to take credit for Janelle? Okay. Being the number one girl pick on my team, Mike. Anyways, I just had, I to mean, we'll get into, but also can I just say that I love this format so much mostly because i love the fact that you have the po political side of things is like so important but in a way that doesn't make it just one big alliance steamrolling so like yes popularity matters and so much but there's such a factor of you gotta do okay anybody can, yeah Anybody can win if you're, and then also the fact that like, if you're in an elimination, you can take it from anybody except for, I guess, like the two winners or whatever. It's like, there's so much 
there's so much game playing strategy that can happen within that that's already kind of happening or starting to. But it's and not so, gameplay that stifles the gameplay, yeah. right? Like, like you're kind of comparing it to the Vacation Alliance that will just steamroll and just like, you know, not vote the people that they're working within and then they'll get to the end. whoop de doo It's good strategy, obviously, if you're playing the game, but boring to watch. But here, it always has to be mixed up. Like you have to do well and you have to do well enough to keep your star because it's it's not safe and you might have to go in and get it again or you might have to win a daily again so i agree with you i think the format really really works and why haven't they do, been doing this all along i love it so, yeah was, the, oh, go ahead there mm -hmm. there was a uh interview with uh one of the producers of the challenge and they were basically asking about all stars and the producer said like yeah for all stars we like lean more into like the fun side of the challenge and like we want it to be really fun because that's what fans want so they know that fans want that yet they make the main show like way less fun and it's like well if you know what works and you know what fans like why are you going the complete opposite on the main show so it's like very refreshing like you get like 12 episodes here uh, which is the perfect length of, it, of a season two, like 12 to 15 episodes. And then the main show, it's like weird formats that fans mostly don't like. Very <laughs> like heavy on the like competition side of things. Um, and then 90 they, minutes. They, yeah, 90 minutes too. 25 episodes, 20 to 25 episodes, including reunions. It's like, well, you the producers know what we want and they're just not giving it to us except for all stars. And then they make us wait a year and a half to get it. So <laughs> it's all very strange, but I'm super happy at least we're getting it now. And Me all stars too. five was renewed. So that's great <gasps> news as well. Really? That's so fun. That's so Yay. fun. That's so fun. Uh, it's not Jonathan, but close. <laughs> <laughs> Hi diva. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's called A Sky Full of Stars or in Cape Town, South Africa. And even the beginning was like a 1970s sitcom type vibe where they're kind of showing the different players and their kind of catchphrase slash tagline for the season. So I wanted to go through them because we start off with Brad the Beard. Okay, is there anything better you can think of for Brad? Crazy eyes? I guess. It, yeah, they can't call him that though. <laughs> Yeah, um, something. I, I think something about like pizza would have been fun. Like Ayana got the salad, so um, if you give Brad something about pizza, I think that could have been funny. But um, um, yeah, beard is just come on. It's you can do pretty kind that. of boring. Maybe that's why they started with it because there were some better ones. Car Maria is the Lone Star. It's kind of how she always is. Um, could you think of anything better? Probably not. Off the top of your head, uh, we got Veronica, Tina, and Rachel, the BFFs. Pretty much I mean, it, that's what they'd be doing. Mm -hmm. Should have it should have been the Mean Girls, but I I don't I, I guess they don't want to uh, emphasize call them that. that. But I think that would have been I mean Paramount Plus call them the Mean Girls like that's that's yeah. their name. <laughs> um, we had Ayana the Salad Slayer. <laughs> Fair, funny. I forgot. Ayana like <laughs> that. Ayana does this kind of stuff that she does. <laughs> like I oof. I have so many questions. Anyways, that's so far from now, but um, we have Tony, obviously Tony time. Yeah. Brandon, the assassin. I don't know what that is. <laughs> like, yeah. Some of them know. were some of the some of them they it felt like they just like threw like a random name out there. Like I mean, I Ace is coming up, like the dude. Like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> some of them are just so weird. Um, some were good, but uh, Derek and Ryan, the besties. Okay, that's something I didn't know that they got really close. Uh, did we know this? I knew they were friends, I didn't know they were like super close, but you know, makes sense. Definitely, Glenda, they've always been amazing friends. starts. Yeah, well, I mean, just the fact that now they're the besties and we have the BFFs, and like, I we learn later on that Ryan will never go against Derek, he'll never write his name down. Like, I didn't know that they were that close. Do you think that they uh hooked up? I didn't get that vibe. Well, I hooked up and then like realized that they make, make better friends, you know? It's possible. I wonder. Uh, we have Leroy and Killa Cam, the power couple. I think they could have thought of something better for them. Probably. 
We have Nicole and Laurel, the awkward exes. I like it's I understand that we want this that there's drama and that this is gonna be like a storyline throughout the season, but already I just need it to be known that like I don't need it. I don't need Nicole there. <laughs> Clearly, Laurel is still so like traumatized and hurt by everything and like is go you know having all these things and it's just bringing out the worst things and it's just gonna get worse and worse and like uh i just uh. yeah like i i didn't mind it this episode but it's gonna get old really quick i hope one of them goes home like relatively quickly i ideally nicole uh, but like I just I don't want that storyline for like twelve to fifteen episodes. Well, the problem no. is they're gonna be together. They're gonna both be on long enough for them to rekindle long enough. Well, to yeah, the we fact see that he invites see her them. to the wedding or whatever, right? right? Um, so. We do see them in the preview for I don't know if it was in the next episode or upcoming episodes, but them kissing. So yeah, yeah that's to come still. It might so. come happen really fast. Yeah. Yeah, I hope uh, yeah, it's I like maybe we get like five six episodes of them their like storyline and then hopefully one of them just goes home and we can move on to better things yeah, yeah. I, I i wouldn't be surprised if like it ends even sooner than five episodes mm -hmm. um just because it, it's just so. so toxic <laughs> and like we we see based on the preview that laurel's gonna lose her mind on Kara, and it's oh my gosh anyways um it's, Joanne, I thought there was tomorrow. I, um, no, we just we just got on right now. It's because when I made this, when I changed the time for this, I was in Vancouver, and so I put nine p.m. and then it makes it look like it's um, twelve midnight here. I, I didn't think about that when I was actually setting the time. I'm sorry. Um, who else do we have here? Uh, reintroducing Kifla as your great uncle. There you are. So you're maybe his adopted son. Um, reintroducing though i think is really funny <laughs> adam is new and improved tyree is a man on a mission flora is this is what did i sign up for oh what a an icon <laughs> avery is the uh, the long shot that's also uh, how did you guys feel about avery in general these past two episodes i mean she's like kind like she's kind of whatever but i mean she's obviously there because she's like one of the most attractive women to ever be on the show oh. um i mean in my opinion at least um but like she didn't really bring much it doesn't seem like she's bringing much but we know she's on season 40, 40 too so I, I i just think she's kind of more eye candy than anything else uh to be honest well, like, no offense i think her. she's i think initially maybe but i think she's going to develop we all obviously know she got invited to the to 40 so that means she must have done something to you know we know there's a showmance that's going to happen with her we already know that kind of stuff and i think she's going to be someone who's going to be in the top <laughs> she's someone who's going to be in the top off and on probably and because she already went against tina voted tina in we now know that like this is gonna there's gonna be a battle if you're against mm -hmm. Veronica, Rachel, you know what I mean? Like, that's going to be a thing. So I think that she'll be, like, a main player as it goes. But, yeah, I agree. She's always been, like, eh, medium for me in terms yeah, of, like, like I like her. Like, she's, like, I, she, I like her just fine. I liked her on The Real World. Um, yeah. But uh, I just feel like maybe she's just, like, a little, like, too nice. Um, I don't think, well, okay, yeah, it could be too nice. Maybe that's it. But I just was kind of, like... She doesn't really have any gameplay or strategy, but then she, it seems as though she doesn't stand behind her decisions. And then she's just kind of like, I, I don't know. I feel like she's going to annoy me. Just how she handled the whole Tina situation. I feel like it's just an indicator that she's going to irritate me, but we'll see. I, I, I'm predicting that it's going to be like, she's just kind of, she's going to be someone that does like fairly well in the game, but uh, is not going to be very memorable. And then it's going to be like, at the end of the season, we're going to be like, why is she on season 40? Uh, I think I know why she's on season 40. And I think it's uh, probably for a little extra protection for Jordan. Um, so I think uh, maybe that's why. And again, like I like Avery. I just like, I don't know. Um, we'll see. Like I, I'm more than happy to be proven wrong if she shows out. But 
Remember that fight she had with with uh, Naya? Yeah, like on Real World, she was very entertaining. Uh, she was crazy. Like she was she was in some crazy moments there. Like her whole thing with Johnny Riley was pretty wild too. Um, I mean, I, we know that the reason why she's gonna probably get onto forty is like like you said, she's gonna be probably a top finishing female for sure. She's young, she's athletic, um, she's likely gonna place in the top. But then she's also gonna get in some sort of showman's, and so that's ticking a couple of boxes and willing to go against seemingly the mean girls. So she's she's likely gonna be involved in a lot of drama. So. I guess that's why, but I just was like, how she handled that whole Tina thing was just, it just kind of was, it lacked any strategy, and I just thought it was just going to be, she's going to annoy me. We'll see, we'll see. How do you feel about Jay, the guy who couldn't drink the drink? I love, I actually am happy he's there, and <laughs> and even the way that he was like introduced, it's like every person has a reason for being there, <laughs> and the reasons are so varied, and like, the fact that he's like, yeah, like people who don't even know my name are like, you're the one who did that stupid thing. And it's like, I always thought that if you were him, like, would you not be so embarrassed? Like people probably like, chirp you all the time. And like, <laughs> it's a real thing he has to deal with. And he's like, I just want to like not make an idiot of myself this time, you know? And he's never been asked back until <laughs> now. And it's like, I don't know. I'm kind of obsessed. I want him to have like one good moment. Like, you know, like give him like one, like daily, like something. And you know, <laughs> I'll be satisfied by that. Uh, do you agree with Ben that Jay low-key aged like fine wine? He kind of looks the same. He looks the same to me. He looks like I a little know. more muscular, uh, but uh, he does look the same. Like he definitely hasn't shown many signs of aging. Um, I, I'm guessing he's probably one of the younger people on the cast, but uh, he did put on a bit of muscle. Uh, yeah, I guess Jay is coming for redemption. Everybody's kind of saying this. Uh, Fernando's appreciating the Jeno, Jenna cameo, which I did too. It was nice seeing Jenna there for a brief second. Um, we have Jasmine as Jazzy J, Ace as the dude, as you mentioned before, which like, is that a reference to The Big Lebowski? I haven't actually seen that movie yet. I'm sorry, guys. Is it? is that is that like is he somehow connected to big lebowski well, though well the dude i think the dude is what they call somebody from the big lebowski so i haven't seen the show to know if his personality is uh -huh. like that i don't know tell us in the chat if you know what this reference is and then we have steve as the hand model as we know and janelle as the fearless one and i'm like hmm, it's interesting that that's what they gave her after knowing how these two episodes go down but yeah um so are any of them stand out that you really like or really hate i love mostly all of them i didn't <laughs> hate anything except for nicole but i don't even think she got an intro really oh just uh, yeah hers is just the awkward exes yeah i feel like my um, laurel could have got something better than that considering like laurel's like place in the challenge history like just to like loop her in with nicole there is like the awkward exes that suck. yeah yeah like, well, maybe she doesn't laurel do well this better. season Maybe. Uh, I mean, uh, I feel like she'll do at least decently well. Uh, but even so, like, give her something good. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, what this kind of reminds me of is so the batch, like the Bachelor and Bachelorette franchise for um, ABC, they have Bachelor in Paradise, which is kind of like the lighter version of the bachelor series and so this is what i feel like this is for me with like the entrances being a little bit more campy and a little bit sillier and like you know it's i i really really love the, the intro it, it may be it may be happy maybe smile i'm so happy to see everybody back on my screen every single person yeah and si similar to the bachelor in paradise the challenge all stars is just way better than the main franchise so much better uh, it's and infinitely better and Bachelor in Paradise is way better than The Bachelor and Bachelorette. Um, so, like when when the shows like are willing to have fun, it makes the show way better. Uh, that's that should be a sign. That should be um, all these franchises need to learn from that. Just like have fun with it. Don't take yourself too seriously, and it's gonna be more enjoyable. Well, it's kind of like, this is what we fell in love with to begin with. Like, I really felt as though these two episodes were 
old school the challenge it wasn't you know explosions and scaling buildings and spies and which i do like to a certain extent but this was like a little more basic a little more you know backyard and a, a lot more enjoyable in my opinion so hopefully i mean you said it's going to be renewed so that's great to hear i really hope that season 40 takes a, a page out of all-stars book because mm -hmm. like i want it to be successful i love the show i want it to do well and so hopefully they'll they'll learn something from all-stars 4. so tj comes in on a bmx bike he's happy to see his man leroy talking about his son kingston uh, tj looked like he was really happy to be there yeah, that's another thing I, I wanted to say about what I love about All-Stars. Like, TJ is just way better in All-Stars because he likes the people he's there with. Uh, like, <laughs> and they're he knows like, who they like, are. Yeah, he knows them. They're, like, in his age brackets. Um, and he, you can tell he is just so happy to be there and happy to see some of these people. Uh, so I, I think TJ really shines um, in All-Stars. And, like, in this intro, he was really shining, too. Mm -hmm. Super shining. He talks to uh, Tony, Tony time. Cause yeah, Tony says, set your clocks back, Tej. It's Tony time. He wants to win because he wants to pay his taxes and he wants to get a better catering cap package for his wedding. So he's so much more mature now and seeing him very happy with his fiance and his two daughters. Um, has Tony matured? Is he, has he, is he a changed man? Do we think so? Or will Tony I, time come out? No, I, I think I think old Tony will come out still. Are you going to say something, Michelle? I'm just like, hopefully it's not him just like cheating on his partner again. Well, with who? There's nobody to for him to cheat on. Yeah, him. exactly. I don't think. Yeah, no, no, not like that kind of Tony. But I think like we'll still get like a little bit of like crazy, like reckless Tony. Whether I actually thought it was like, funny. I, I think it was after the segment when Jay was talking about how, like, you know, people were coming up to him being like, can't believe you didn't drink the drink. And you see Tony being like, well, you didn't, like, practice eating? <laughs> like, he's actually shocked that he didn't practice eating when that's when he came on the challenge and he really did poorly at it. <laughs> and I was like, Tony still got it. Like, yeah. I think I think he's still going to be okay. Well, Tony's the best at eating things. Like, him right. and CT are, like, notoriously the best at eating things. Oh yeah, Tony. Like Tony will eat anything, and uh, he's probably like disgusted that Jay wouldn't eat something. Uh, <laughs> like, let's see. Like, I mean, I feel like Tony's like not like a great like puzzle person. Let's see if Tony practiced puzzles before he judges Jay. Yeah, truly. <laughs> uh, Tatiana thinks that Tony's a very handsome. He looks more attractive than before. I think it was the same. I think he looks more like his brother than he did before. I never thought that yes. him and his brother looked similar, and then when he was doing his confessionals, I, I could see his brother um, more in his face. Yeah. So Kefla, Kefla, sorry, is the first winner in 1998. And it's funny that 1998 is probably older than some people in the main show are, like born, like their birthday. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, sure. <laughs> it's wild to me. Because that would make them 26, at least. And there's definitely people younger than that, for sure. <laughs> um, Flora hopes not to die. <laughs> first, all first. of her confessionals were 100%. 100%. Wins. She's she's great. And Every time. I don't know if she's going to go far and do well in that way, but she's she, it's nice to have her on our screen. She has yeah. a personality. She's pretty fun. Uh, Nicole's going to be a lieutenant soon at the fire department. Um, and we see <laughs> the poor producer asking Laurel about, uh, sorry. Yeah. Laurel about Nicole. And she's like, I don't, I don't care about Nicole. I don't think about Nicole. And she's like, she gets pretty heated quite quickly when she's asked about Nicole. Uh, it's definitely a hot button. Hot stove. Yeah. Fire. It's very clear. And oh, I just feel bad because Nicole is so like a professional gaslighter, gaslighter. So it's like having to be in the same space as her it's like it's, it's inevitable in the state that laurel's in in this season she has clearly hasn't had the processing and the closure and the growth that she needed to have had by the time she had to spend time with her in a house because like nicole like i'm sorry that you feel this way oh that's like the worst thing you can say that's the oh. worst thing you can say i like, <laughs> never say that it's like 
when you don't like somebody, everything about them really bothers you. And so I know that Nicole's accent must just grate on Laurel's nerves because she's just such an infuriating person. And I'm sure that, you know, we if we're annoyed by her, Laurel must be annoyed by her to like the 10th degree, nth degree. Rachel is back. It's nice to see her. Um, Mama's going to get that money. Um, the kids watch the show. They're hoping that she's going to do well. Obviously, we know that she's still in amazing shape. She does all the challenge fitness videos. And what, did she have her own fitness st studio or videos? Her own? What did she? Well, she yeah, do? she mentioned something about that. Uh, I didn't know if she was referring to like what she does with the challenge or if it was something different. But uh, obviously, she does some sort of training. Yeah, she's fit for sure. Um, the legend Kara is back. Um, somebody said need a solid political game. I don't know if it was her or not. I didn't write down who it was. Uh, Tyree feels, though, that he has at least some backup in this game. He, apparently, in the other seasons that he was on, he kind of felt like he was a little bit of a lone wolf. And so he feels that with, like, Leroy and Brandon being on the season, Killicam, that potentially he has some people to work with. So... Were you having high, higher hopes for Tyree at this point? I, Not really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just like figured, I mean, Tyree always like goes early. So I'm like, you know, I like he'll probably go early again. I, I mean, I didn't necessarily think, oh, he'll be the first one out. But uh, he looked like in good shape. Like he obviously like had a few friends, but no, nah, I wasn't like feeling super optimistic. Like, he, I don't think he was yeah. anyone's like number one. I do feel kind of bad for him because, like, he's never won an elimination. Yeah, I feel bad and... for him. Especially being a personal trainer and, like, he talks about jujitsu and other forms of martial arts. But he did He did very well in the elimination, and it all was up to that last thing. So it's like he did do well. And, and, and I also was riding for Steve's story, obviously, too. But, like, I really – I felt for Tyree. Like, I, I did kind of want him to get it in the moment, I think. Oh, Austin here saying that uh, Rachel has her own website. Got it. <laughs> oh, poor Nicole. Do you hear my name spoken <laughs> with such disdain? I'm sorry. Uh, but, you know, it's unfortunate. Think about how Karens feel, right? I have a couple friends named Karen, and I'm like, they even use the people as Karens themselves. So you're just going to have to take it on the chin here. I'm sorry. So we learned that this is going to be a solo game. The finalists are going to be making some money as well. So it's $250,000 for the one loan winner. And the, the other two finalists are going to share $50,000. Couldn't they give them a little bit more money since this is a more superior product? Well, they actually said like whoever crosses the finish line oh, will true. split 50000 So it could theoretically be five people splitting fifty, which is nothing, right? Um, so yeah, that was like, that was very strange. I I know that in the past, like the winners of All Stars have won 250k as well. But um, yeah, give them a little more. It's uh, I I think at the very least, like have the whoever crosses the finish line split 100k even um, feels a little low. But saving up for 40, just like 39, <laughs> probably. So Sarah says it's so sad that the show misspelled Tyree's name. Yeah, okay, I noticed that they didn't have an E. Me too. But is that maybe how he spells his name? And it's always been misspelled, like, other than that? Because, like, I think that, that they should know how to spell his name. That's wild yeah. to me they made a mistake. No? I'm and they sure. made the mistake multiple times, too. Yeah, so it's, it, that's I how wonder his name is spelled. For every yeah, I wonder if maybe he, like, maybe he changed his name and dropped the E since we last saw him. But back in the day, he spelt his name with an E for sure. Well, I always thought it was with an E insofar as I wouldn't have noticed if it wasn't that way, right? Um, let's see what it says on the challenge wiki. Yeah, it still has an IE, so... Maybe, oh, do you know what? Maybe he'll be, I don't know if there's going to be exit interviews, but if... Um, Rob and um, uh, Brian do exit interviews. Maybe maybe they'll ask that. That's something Rob would ask. So, well, I hope. don't think they will though. You don't think that they'll have exit interviews or ask that? No, I don't think they'll have because they only do it for the CBS one, right? I don't know. They only started doing that, I think, last season. So I'm not sure. 
and they did CB they did CBS and they did whatever the last season was that we just 39. Uh, so the house I found looks fun. It has all these water slides and swings and, you know, we see that everybody's kind of doing their own version of the bananas toast. Leroy wants everybody just to let him win. <laughs> um, Jasmine's cheersing to her divorce party and Kifla toasts to family, friendships and something else that I didn't write. I always want to go back and figure, write things out and then I forget. But I'm I'm happy to see everybody making these toasts. Yeah, that was a cute together. moment. That was a really cute moment. Steve and Tony are all already calling out Jay, which I thought was hilarious, talking about his redemption season. Um, and they he's considered to be a layup to most people. And this is where Tony basically is appalled that he did not practice eating. Uh, me personally, though, I love seeing Ray Ray and Tina and Veronica coming together. They're all just hanging out. But then Veronica has a confessional that says she she knows that it's really nice seeing everybody, but she knows that it's still a game and it's still a competition. So do you think that Veronica is going to end up turning on them? No, I don't think so. No. Well, even like, Rachel said, like, I would never say their name. I don't I don't think they're like if anyone was going to, it would probably be Veronica. But I really don't see that yeah happening. out of the three she's the one that would i think it would have to be a situation where it was like right before the final and whatever decision and it was like either she goes home or she takes out tina or something or reach or like I, who knows maybe if there was a way maybe there's a vote or something that puts rachel in jeopardy right before the end just because rachel is, is so clearly like the farmer i don't know but I still don't think she would, but in the right circumstance, I could see her maybe making that decision. If it was close enough to the end and the the risk versus reward was like high enough for her, I could see her doing that. But Tina would never. Tina would leave. I know. I don't think Tina, Tina would never. Rachel seemingly would never. But just the fact that they put in that little confessional with her being like, okay, I know we're friends and happy to see each other, but like it is a game. I'm just curious if she might turn her back on them. But I, I agree it would be later down the road. Yeah, I, I don't think it will happen. I think the the maybe the one thing that could happen is if, say, like Veronica had to go in elimination and the options were like Tina or like Laurel, then I could see Veronica maybe telling people, right. like, hey, like vote for Tina mm -hmm. instead of Laurel because I don't want to go against Laurel. But I, that would be like the worst case scenario, I think. I don't All think right. she would actively like go after either of them. So we see Flora commenting on Ayana's body and her boobies. Um, another line that Flora did say that I forgot to mention was that she doesn't know them, but she doesn't want to shit to herself. <laughs> like, <laughs> Everything okay, she said was so dry and just perfectly like, I, I love that. I, she just doesn't care. She's like, I hope I survive. Like, I, I hope I don't die here. I don't know. I just love it. <laughs> Great. Okay, Nicole's helping me out here. So keep a toasted to friendship, friends, and family. Friends twice, because we're old. We forget sometimes what we say. Okay. That's probably why I was like, what? And I just froze up as to what I was writing down. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. 98 graduation. Peace here too. Um Cam, we learned um is had a c-section and we also see um ayana and cam kind of bonding a little bit um ayana is basically saying like yeah i'm standing here with a challenge champion and like you know, she's like you know i want to run this final with you and they kind of talk about working together and then we see fam or cam talking about how you know she doesn't know if she still got it because she had the c-section because she hasn't been in one of these games in a while but she still says that she's still killing cam so what do you think about Ayana and Cam at this point potentially forming a little bit of an alliance? I don't think it's, I think it's more so that it's going to come up later on because we see like there's going to be fights with Jasmine and, and Ayana. And I think that like Cam obviously recognizes, especially with what happens with Leroy and Ayana as well. Like that, like, this is not someone to keep around in terms of probably for her game. So I think she will turn on Ayana at some point and it will cause like a whole scene. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't um, think any sort of alliance with him is going to last long. I think like even the fact that <laughs> I, Ayana is like openly saying like, Oh yeah, like you're a future champion. 
I, I feel like Ayana is also probably saying that to other people, just judging off of what we know about her. And I could see Cam like not wanting that around where it's like a t even bigger target painted on her. So yeah, I definitely don't see this uh, lasting too long. I think maybe it's more one-sided on I Ayana's part. We learned that Tyree um, as, is a personal trainer, um, and but he had a daughter in, uh, and his daughter's name is Alyssa DM Marie. Now, do you think that DM was like, like as referring to DM from the challenge, or do you think he just liked the name, or was there like a, a friendship that we, a strong friendship that we didn't know about, and so it could be in like on airarium? Yeah, I, I was wondering that too. Uh, I. I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, obviously, like he was not super memorable on the show, but I imagine they must have crossed paths a couple times. So maybe they were closer than we knew. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to find out if he does do any press. I'm sure that's something that we'll get asked as well. For sure. I, I want to definitely want to know that. Um, so I definitely thought it was a funny segment, which was making me smile with Steve and his work with his hand jobs being affected by COVID. And he said hand job probably like 30 times. I have, it can't be, it was dumb and goofy and I liked it. I'm sorry. Low hanging fruit, but it was funny. <laughs> We see Veronica schooling Adam, uh, talking about Adam like, saying, you know, the, the mission. And Veronica's like, it's not called missions anymore. And, you know, he's he's an old man now. He doesn't know what the challenges are called, the daily challenges. Um, but he is going to be Adam 4.0, which is way stronger and wanting to make some solid connections and friendships. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm curious you, to learn more ahead. about Adam because Adam, yeah. he had said... Like, I mean, one, like, I remember him being, like, fairly good at the game, like, back in the day. But he also was saying, like, uh, Adam 3.0 was, like, not a good person or so. I can't remember yeah. exactly what he said. But I'm curious to hear more about his backstory or why, mm -hmm. like, what what place was he in earlier in his life? Like, I know he's a father, but um, curious to learn more through, like, flashbacks or a little bit about his life and whatnot. Because, uh he seems like an interesting guy and like a very fun guy too. I, I really liked him from the little we got here, but um, definitely want to learn more about him. Sophie, you're saying, yeah, Tyree confirmed it is DM from the challenge. Okay. That's really sweet. Um, I wish that they had, they had maybe just touched on that briefly. It would have been nice just for clarification. Cause people, most fans are going to be curious about that. Um, yeah, I also am interested in knowing a little bit more about Adam. I want to know what happened Adam 3.0 era. Hopefully we'll get more information. What Maybe it's when he gets involved with Avery. We'll learn a little bit more about his back, back um, backstory. So we will see. But I'm happy that he's here and he seemingly is pretty strong. So we see Jan Janelle connecting with Nicole because they're both first responders. And this was the first scene I was like, oh. This is my number one girl pick. I'm like so frustrated because I'm like, it, I don't want her to be linking up with Nicole. Like that's not the best strategy. And like one of the reasons why I was kind of irritated that she was my first draft pick because I didn't feel like she was connected with people on the show. And so, yeah, she might be decent physically, but she just doesn't have that many friends or people that are willing to stick their neck out for them, for her or want to save her or, you know, that she can work really well with. And so I was like, I just didn't feel like she was set up to be successful in this game. And then when I see that she's trying to work with Nicole and, and we're learning that, you know, Nicole doesn't want to work with Laurel. Obviously we know that um, because, you know, Laurel's secretly in love with Nicole still um, according to Nicole, but then Janelle's kind of mentioning that she doesn't really get along with that many people in the house. And I'm like, she's kind of bummed. The thing is J Janelle's strengths don't lie in her social strategy. When she has people she's connected with, those are real relationships and those can be used. And she's real. She's authentic like she is. Her strengths are her smarts in the challenges, in the games, and and the way her mind works when she's in a final and in those kind of high-pressure situations. And unfortunately, with this group and this cast, it's just 
Yeah. I, I just, I need to know, like someone needs to remind me, explain to me why Ayana seems to hate her so much. Cause I, I do not understand. I don't remember like, so confused by either. That. Like why? But then she was, as we get into it, Ayana's like, you know, jumping on every, everyone who tries to say anything <laughs> like we see it with Leroy, we see, you know, so it's maybe it's not specific, but like it seemed very, very targeted, um, like blatant, like, yeah, I'm lying and I'm making this up and ha ha ha. Yay. Yeah, I, I get the vibe that we're not getting the whole story, partly because like we all know what Ayana's going through in real life. And like, I don't think they want to mm. like overdo it and like villainize her too much. Like, obviously, like she is still being painted as a villain, but it's been more like funny villain and. I feel like there's maybe more that might be like a little bit like a, like a darker side to the story where maybe they don't want to get into it too much because they don't want people like bashing her if they take Janelle's mm -hmm. side. Uh, mm -hmm. Not to say that like, not to say like who's in the wrong or right here, but naturally if there's a bigger conflict, like there's going to be sides and I don't think they want to like bring that attention to uh, I Ayana right now, considering like she is going through cancer um, so that's the kind of vibe I got where it's like, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate because there's a lot of the story that's clearly missing here. I agreed. Agreed. Uh, Leora does ask, um, Laurel if her and Nicole are cool. She just flat out says no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, we see the beginning of the daily. So TJ's standing there and we get the bloopers of him trying to catch, an apple uh, saying, how about them apples and catch an apple without really looking at it. And he did a few takes. This is fun. I like it. Mm -hmm. Give me the tapes. Give me the, blo the bloopers. Uh, we have the daily challenge. Um, wait, must have a stew. What am I talking about? Oh, okay. Sorry. He needed to have Steve come and help him show all the stars that were going to be up for grabs of this um, this daily challenge. And so TJ needed to have a professional hand model help him with this task. And so Steve does do this. Um, so we learned that the top three men and the top three women are going to get stars. Uh, this, this daily challenge is called Reach for the Stars. And basically you have to match up eight stars. So from what I can gather with this daily, is that each of the eight stars have holes that are in different positions and then they have star prongs that have the post post in different positions they have to kind of like a puzzle piece place the stars on the correct one i didn't understand though why it was so hard so like if they tried one position did they have to run back before they can try that same star at another position because like why was it so like at another station yeah i think so that's what it seemed to me that you could only obviously one at a time and one you have to complete that spot and you have to go like in order like okay that. complete that spot yes because it would be i mean it, it would still be hard but you would think that you could just figure out where each star went you know what i mean as opposed to one station at a time mm. so yeah that kind of sucks for them <laughs> Yeah, uh, apparently it lasted really very long. Terrible at it. Um, so yeah, the bottom group though, you don't want to be in it. So we do learn that the bottom group is going to be up for to go down into elimination, and the people at the top are going to get stars, which is going to give them safety from the elimination, but their stars could be stolen. So we already kind of talked briefly about this new twist. I think it's great. It's very interesting. It makes it fun. It makes it still can be targeted, still can have alliances, but there's just a lot more room for strategy. So I am all in for this new format. Uh, Ryan was using his hands as a penis measurer to find out the distance between each of the prongs for his stars. And this seems to have worked. Uh, do, would you have taken on this strategy of measurement or would you have another way to determine the distance between the prongs? I think I probably would have done more of like what Keeflo was doing where it was like, okay, like it's like three kind of like this and two kind of like this. Okay. And I would think of the, I'm a very visual, like that's, I would picture the image of the, where the holes were. And then I would go back and be like, okay, I want it to look like that. And I think that that would make it easy, easier probably. No, yeah. I would go penis, <laughs> uh, penis length as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that would have been the first thing that came to my mind. Just like to go off a of penis. <laughs> now that that was really that was really funny by Ryan. I don't yeah. know how well Ryan did in it though. So obviously this I, I think he was in the middle group at least. So. I think he started off strong and then I think it uh maybe he didn't have reference points anymore for like the distances or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, I, what, what would I do? I think that I would have been more in the in the style that you would have done it, Michelle, where I would look at like kind of patterns on, on how visually the pattern would be. <laughs> uh, people are laughing with you, Matthew. <laughs> so Leroy was on uh, the Challenge um, podcast uh, this week. And he was saying, obviously, he didn't do well here. But I think Cam did decently well. And yeah, she was about saying, three. Yeah, so she was saying, no, I think she was just outside the top three. Oh, never mind. No, she was not, but she was fine. She was in the middle. Yeah, she was in the middle, but she, but Cam basically told Leroy, like, hey, like the best strategy is when you're on your way down, like after you put the piece in, instead of racing down, go very slowly down and like try to look at the pieces up top to see, like, so when you get back down, if you have a bit of a head start there because everyone was just racing down to get there as quickly as possible. But at the end of the day, it, if you have to take more trips because you get it wrong, it won't matter how fast you're running. So Cam was uh, going like kind of slow and steady. Obviously, like wasn't in the top three, but uh, wasn't in the bottom either, which I mean, Leroy was in the end. That's also a good strategy. And we know that she just had a child recently, so she's not going to be at, in as good a shape. And so, like, you know, I think this is a good strategy for somebody that doesn't necessarily have the stamina that she did before, beforehand. Uh, Jay is on number two, and everyone is on number five out of their eight stars. And I was like, Jay, you're already <laughs> flagging behind here. I'm like, come on, buddy. You're young. You're one of the younger people on this season. Well, get you didn't get the bottom bottom, so that's good. Eventually, but he was on two when everyone was on five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Veronica's goal was not to pass out. <laughs> Veronica. Uh, when I see clips of her when she was younger, she was so petite and like fit. And so I just wish that she kind of got like training from Rachel before she came back on the season. So, yeah. I don't think she cares I'm, though. I don't like, I don't think she's there to win. I don't, I, I honestly think she is like coming to like have a good time. Like she gets a pretty nice paycheck, I'm sure. Um, and like if, with all stars in particular, like she's gonna like hang out with her friends, and I don't know what she does like outside of the show, but um, yeah, me neither, actually, yeah, I, I feel like at this point, like she, I don't, I don't think it's like Anissa where like Anissa thinks that she's gonna win Fair. and just like sucks, but Veronica but sucks and knows that she sucks, I think. So first all around coming through with the W is Cara Maria coming back from a few years of being away from the show and is first all around in the daily challenge. Next in is Brad. So he is first overall for the men. Second for the men is Adam. So Adam, who hasn't been around for a really long time, uh, takes second spot here, which means he will be getting a star. And we learned that he is working with Veronica and Rachel. Obviously, they're from the same era. and They were on road rules and like, you know, from back in the day. Uh, but it's nice to know that he he's connected. And I want him to be connected. I want him to do well, and not just be, you know, thrown in all the time. Kind of like how Ace was. Sorry, Ace. Yeah, Veronica, yeah, maybe she is on a little bit of a holiday. But she's strategic, though, so she could still get to the end. Brandon comes in third place, snagging the third star. Kifla is fourth, and he was emotional here. Is this where we learned that he has a Road Rules tattoo, or was that later? Uh, that was the car remember. one. Oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we love seeing Kifla, even when he's emotional. We're just like, oh, we feel it for you, Kifla. You are, you're, you still matter. It's kind of like the Golden Bachelor where all the women were like, you know, we stopped feeling like we mattered. It's like he's having that same kind of moment. Like, I still could be a competitor on these shows. I matter still. Yeah, but when he completes it, first of all, he's fourth. Sorry, I jumped ahead. Go ahead. He's, he's fourth. And it's like, oh, like when he teared up, I don't know. It just, it, 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 it. I felt the emotion of that. Yeah, I felt I felt it too. That like that's when I really started to like. Love, I think that's when I tweeted that I loved him <laughs> uh, right after I was watching that part. Um, it was just like so pure. And then 
I'm like now seeing him post on Twitter. Like he like tweets like like a like a dad. He's like he literally <laughs> is like a dad on Twitter, and he's just posting like, oh, I'm like so grateful for the opportunity. Like I would love to do it again. It would mean the world to me to compete. Like oh, dude, like they need him back on All Stars Five. I honestly, I said to you guys before, like they should have put him on season forty after this. Um, let him be on that era one. That would have been awesome too. Hundred percent. Now I, I don't know what happens, but like, why does why do we get um, Cyrus? Because Cyrus is part of the cast, and so I'm, like I'm, that makes I, me I, worried. Yeah, it was weird, especially considering like Janelle was the one to quit. Like you would think maybe they would bring in another woman, but but something yeah, else. Fact. Well, they do bring in somebody, though, right? That's what happens next episode. Well, it's yeah. kind of Cyrus, right? Because Cyrus is part of the cast. But they already oh. were up one man. Yeah, it's weird, right? Nobody got injured or anything this episode, mm. uh, or either episode. So I don't know. Well, I know. after this, like this episode two, they're even again. So adding a man is kind of the same thing as adding a woman. Wait, no, they're not even again because they are after the second episode because Janelle left and then Tina yeah, won it's just the and Kyrie. Oh, but it's Kyrie weird, like... and Janelle went home, so they're even but, again. Yeah, but it was an extra person bringing... though. So two people went home. It would still be up one man. Oh, I didn't no. realize we were up one from the beginning. Yeah, no, 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 no. twenty-five. Oh, is that no, one no. woman? Cyrus is the twenty-five. Is the, is oh, the... gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, you're right. Never mind. Correct. So we've. Yeah, I don't know why they're just going to add him. Like, yeah, it will only be one more man, but um, I don't know why it would, he would be added to here because nobody got hurt. Like, nobody talked about leaving from the male side. Um, so hopefully it's just like, maybe maybe Cyrus was always on the cast and he had to show up late for whatever reason. Maybe he, he had COVID. Uh, this was filmed two years ago, so I guess COVID was kind of still a thing then. Well, this isn't really spoilers, like, because he's on the cast list. No, he's literally, like, has a cast photo, and he's... Like, he's totally on my there. draft team, guys, so, like, <laughs> if he's if this is a spoiler, why did you draft him for me, peoples? Uh, but, yeah, I don't want any actual spoilers. Only speculations, people. Only speculations. Um... Okay, so then Avery does come in as the second female. So that is definitely pretty impressive. Um, the fact that out of all these women that have come back, that she is snagging the second place spot and the second star. Uh, Ta Tony gets to the end and he pulls Veronica's flag. So in true Tony fashion, like, <laughs> yeah, he's like goes wrong and strong. He die does a dive to tag and pull his flag and it's not his it's veronica's the third place spot goes to rachel fourth janelle fifth ayana jay nicole cam and Norrell come in after that in the middle and then the bottom we learn to be tina jasmine flora and veronica for the women and then leroy derek tyree and steve for the men so the middle group are going to be having some authority. They're going to be choosing two men to go down. So do we do we also like the fact that like if you're in the bottom, you have a chance to be going against someone in the bottom. Like you don't get to pick somebody that's in the middle to go against in the elimination. Do we like that as I, well? I was kind of hoping that it would be like out of the bottom. Like say it was the middle, or I thought it'd be the top, but who cares? Like they someone gets voted in for sure. And then in the moment, that person gets to pick anybody they want except for the winners. Because I always find that exciting that like anyone can go in. And the fact that the person on the bottom then has a slight advantage if they choose to not tell people who they're going to pick and throw someone off guard. I do always like that because it creates some excitement. But this is fine. I mean, if you're in the bottom, you're in the bottom. Like it's not, you know, it is what it is. You At least you put yourself there. So it's not the same as as getting completely screwed over uh, i don't know i think i prefer the winning team votes one person in and then like the, the middle group do. votes to the uh, second person oh. mm, yeah instead of i don't i don't necessarily love the middle group getting to vote both people in because then it's just like a huge advantage to the people that just did average and like yeah you, like you get the star there but like now that these people have the stars like moving forward winning is just keeping you safe it's not like giving you any advantage because you're gonna have to steal a star regardless 
So well, I think- you, well, winning though, it does save your, like it keeps you from having your star stolen. So no, but I mean the it. people like, like for episode two, like the people that don't have a star, like Laurel one didn't have a star. And oh. the only way she could get a star was to volunteer for elimination. So essentially she had no power other than being safe, which I think winning should have a little bit more power. But I don't, I don't mind it. It's not like horrible. I just would prefer the winning team to have a little bit more power. Yeah, I can, I can see that. But I do like the people that are, that kind of get punished for doing poorly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that I still um, think it should be voting on the people in the bottom. Uh, I actually like that. Um, so let's say, yeah, if there's like four people eligible. Uh, so I, you're just basically would prefer to have the winning team be choosing instead of the, the middle team should just have no agency. Basically. No, I think the winning team should. I mean, the, the middle team. Should, say, sorry, say it again. I think the winning team should automatically choose one person and then the middle team votes on the second person. Okay. So there's still a vote element, but it's just similar to 39 where they had to on the spot decide on one person and then the house would vote on the um, the second. I kind of like that personally. Okay, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. But this still is working so far. Um, Steven here is saying it's, it's a lot about maintaining your star throughout the season. Absolutely. Um, but I, I can agree with you, though, that having – if you're winning, it's nice. it would be nice to have some power and being able to set the strategy as to how you want it to go. So totally And agree. wait, to be clear, okay. if you get like the number one winning spot, like how it's Kara and uh, Brad moving forward, like how it's Laurel and Nicole or whatever in the second one, if you're the actual winner and you already have a star, like say Kara wins another it's one. protected. She's protected and they can't steal her star because she won that daily? Or can they still Correct. steal her star? Okay, they so no, no. I thought they still could. So I thought that if you have a star and you win, then your star is protected. But Brandon's star got stolen. But he didn't get first. I think it's like, isn't it like the top? Well, That's what I'm saying, the winner. Yeah, but the sec like for the second challenge, for example, there was like no top, top. It was just a team of four, right? Yeah, true. So I feel like if like one but of them, who was in the team of four? Because it was it was male and female, right? Yeah, Laurel, yeah, it was Laurel Nicole, Nicole, Tony, and, and... Jay. Jay. So none of, none of them had a star, so it didn't, it didn't. No, but I'm saying, what if they did? Like that's I, my question. As yeah. far as I, my understanding is, if you have a star and you are on the winning team, that your star is protected from being stolen. Yeah, maybe it was just for the first one because like because. Um, they had to like steal a star that they had a different rule there um, because they were just giving them out so that all the six were given out initially. So it was like, okay, like these people get them, but then they can get taken ex except for, cause like Kara and Brad's, they weren't eligible to be taken. It Correct. had to have been Brandon or, or one of the others or like, you know, I, think. I mean, we'll be able to see as more people get stars, we'll yeah. be able to see it come into effect. Yeah. But I believe that that is what the power of winning the daily is. It's you protect your star. Um, and then you also have the opportunity to go in and take a star if you want. Mm -hmm. I think I think that that's where your power is. Yeah, protect hopefully, hopefully that's the case. Because if you win, you should not be able to have your star stolen. That's Yeah, exactly. I, that must be what it is. That must be what it is. I wouldn't, I like, then it just wouldn't, they wouldn't have said anything, right? It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. I just, yeah, I think that the winners can't get their stars stolen if they have one. Right. Uh, Darren here is saying you're correct because plus someone with a star can go down to win a star for an ally, which is interesting. So, yeah. So, and I think that the, only the winner has that uh, opportunity, right? To steal a star. That is or the craziest <laughs> risk. You're going to throw yourself in to try to get an extra star for your friend, but you could literally go home. That's I feel like I feel like uh, like Leroy or Cam will do that to try to get one for the other person. Uh, Cam could come into play him. near the end, you know, if it's like coming close to the final and like this is the last time to get a star. Maybe it might go in. We'll see. And Stephen likes this twist. He thinks it's cool. And um, if a female steals a male star, it has to go to a yeah. male. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. why I think Cam, like I could see Cam or Leroy doing it and then giving it to the other one. Um, I thought that uh, someone was going to go down this episode, but it didn't happen. Or next episode, but it didn't happen. 
All right. So um, Brad, though, now after he's won, he's not sure that he should have won because now people are going to be looking at him to get his star, uh, makes him a bit of a target. And so, yeah, like the, the whole fading into the background is it's not really as possible if you need to have these stars. And then when you have the star, it's like, ooh, do I want to take your star away from you? So he's realizing that he might have to start playing the game, which is fun. Cam, uh, as you guys both have already mentioned, is going to be working for Leroy. She really wants Leroy to do well. It seems like she is there to support Leroy's game. I think that she, I agree that she's trying to get Leroy his win here, which is hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. Cam says immediately, can Leroy not be an option? So she just takes Leroy completely off the table in this nomination. Uh, what we call it a ceremony discussion. Uh, Avery wants Cam on her side, so she's kind of agreeing with her that she's not going to vote for Leroy. Uh, and then for Janelle and her boring, like, diplomatic position being like, well, how about everybody just vote how they want to vote? And, like, you know, the votes are in secret. You can just do what you want. I'm like, okay, yeah. This is the problem again with the social game, though, right? Because yes. the strategy of it is you have to let people do things. And like when people are being like Ayana and just like talking and talking or like other situations, it's like, let them dig their grave. Then if you can, as long as you got to make sure you're, you're in a good position. So that's what you got to worry about instead of telling, you know, uh, yeah. Anyway, It's just like, why is she telling people like, to, I don't know. It, that's it just, I was realizing why I wasn't so excited about her as a player is that she just wants it to be, diplomatic and like let's maybe just take fair and take numbers out of a hat and like kind of season one survivor vibes where like before Richard Hatch came in and changed everything with alliances and and gameplay and strategy uh, and I you know I have to say that in the beginning I was like who's this Richard guy like he's such a snake like I did think that it was the asshole way to play the game and then I've been converted and that's my favorite part about the game is like how you can strategize and manipulate and whatever and so the fact that she just wants it to be like you know everybody you don't need to tell everybody who you're voting for you don't need to it's like yeah you do <laughs> get out of here janelle anyways she annoyed me oh right the losers are also chatting at the same time while the the nominations um well while they're deliberating about the nominations we learn that ryan is going to vote for tyree and steve um because we, we do learn from tj that it's a male elimination day Ayana does Tyree and Steve as well. Ace does Leroy and Derek. Leroy, Ace was like, I don't, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to vote who I want. I was like, it's another person. Ace, this is terrible. Another terrible Ace. gameplay. Why yeah, are you doing Ace, that? You're trying to build connections. Ace does not belong on the challenge. He is like a fish out of water. Yeah. And I want him to do well. And every time, like sometimes it's out of his control. Like he just kind of gets, you know, screwed over and first elimination or whatever but like in this case i'm like why are you going against the grain right like, like you're going against leroy somebody that is you must notice is well connected has leroy and cam cam's immediately saying like i i'm standing behind and i don't want you guys to throw in my guy and yeah sure that could be annoying mean like oh who is she to like you know say that we can't vote for somebody okay i get that but you kind of also had to play the game a little bit and like not want her on your bad side when especially, it's not you. Especially for the first the first vote, right? Like the first vote. Yeah. We don't know either, Tatiana. We don't know either. But yeah, maybe he got a decent paycheck. And it's only for what, like two weeks? So it might be yeah. good. Uh, Brandon chooses Steve and Derek. Um, Avery chooses Steve and I don't think she said the other person we cut to, well, it was a commercial break, but there was an actual commercial. So nominated are going to be Steve and Tyree. They're going to be going against each other in this elimination. And we learned that you can win a star for an ally. So it's a bit of an interesting twist. They're going to be playing catch a falling star in this elimination. There are 12 stars that are going to be shot out of kind of like a cannon thing with other balls that do not have a star on them. And first person to stack 12 in their little cylinder is going to win. Basically, Tyree was ahead of the game the entire elimination. And then all of a sudden, maybe he got winded and he just stopped moving. And Steve had kind of built a strategy to 
pool the balls together uh, because you're only put them in the cylinder one at a time. And then all of a sudden, Steve comes from behind and it's 11 to 11. And Steve remembers where he had a ball hidden. And he very dramatically, I have to say, <laughs> gets out and puts in the last ball. And Tyree, once again, is out first. Yeah, he looked so defeated too. And like, this was like his opportunity. Uh, he should have won. Um, I don't know how he didn't like see that Steve was going back to the same place and piling all the balls together. But damn, yeah, it was real upsetting for Tyree. Yeah, like, I wanted Tyree to win just for his own self-esteem and ego yeah. and his legacy. Just like I, I haven't seen one draft where he wasn't last or very close to last. And he shouldn't be like he's a strong guy. He's a personal trainer. He's been on seasons before. He has friends sort of in these games. He shouldn't be going out first all the time and so i was hoping that he wasn't going to go out first but then i also wanted steve to be in the game still because that supports the the oldies alliance with you know tina veronica rachel uh adam and whoever else is in that group and so i want him to be there for them but yeah i'm kind of i'm sad for tyree poor tyree but tj does say um i really hope that we will see you in the future do you think he was being truthful? Yes. I, mean, I, I think TJ is being truthful, but do I think we'll see him in the future? Probably not. <laughs> Steven says, I can't believe this is for his fourth time being out first. This is it's wild. Poor guy. Oh, well, it's so sad. But uh, honestly, that happens with... to Cyrus a lot too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Oh my God. Are we talking about Tyree that passed on the toilet? Yes, we are. AR, we are. We are. Okay, so um, now Steve is able to choose his star from someone, or he can choose it from a woman and uh, give it to somebody, uh, like give it to somebody else. And so he does choose Brandon. So Brandon was somebody that voted for him to go into elimination. So payback's a B. And he takes Brandon's star. So next episode two is You Won't Break My Soul. I, I, was there any reference to uh, Beyonce? Because that's her song, right? You Won't Break My Soul. I wonder if they, you did they play that song? Everybody. I don't know. I didn't notice it. But I noticed the title. So we do see the previously on the challenge, which they didn't do before 39 at all. Um, but this was Steve doing the previously on. I don't know. He had some sort of contraption on his legs. I don't know. It was like a muscle massager or something. Uh, and then typical of um, old school road rules and real world where the players were narrating their with a voiceover and in clips of their voices talking about the previously on. I love that. It was so old school vibes for me. Yeah, I hope every episode starts with um, a player in the game doing the voiceover. Uh, I like that. Like in the past, it's been TJ doing it, but I, I don't know. I don't think that's where like TJ shines as much. Uh, oh, true. Like, yeah, because he wasn't the host really back then, like in that way. He just kind of introduced the dailies and stuff like that, but he didn't do all the voiceovers. So yeah, that's a good call. Uh, Ayanna thinks the star twist is dangerous. And I, I was like, oh, Ayanna's going to be throwing herself in for sure for her to be saying that. Seeing Laurel and Nicole in the kitchen, it, it, it's too awkward for me. I, I, I'm just, I'm so secondhand embarrassment and discomfort with them pretending like everything's cool and they don't mind being around each other while they're like making eggs or whatever. Ox. Ox, ox. So Laurel's trying to be cordial. Nicole's being Nicole. And wait, what am I writing here? Ayanna can't go. Oh, down the side and get stuck. I thought that was really funny because it was just a montage of everybody going down the slide and Tina with the dish soap and making it slippery going down the slide. And then Ayanna trying to go down the slide and literally getting stuck going down the water slide. Is this this isn't the same house that they used for 39? Why couldn't they use I guess they're in a different country? <laughs> well, this um, is the same house they used for 
global, but for some reason it seems way more fun this season. And in global, like we never saw them having fun. Uh, and I think it just goes to show like a lot of that's due to cast, I think too, or it's like their cast on global was very serious. And, uh, this cast is just like wanting to have a good time, but yeah, it's, it's the same house. Tori said on the podcast that it was the same house that they filmed, filmed global in. It's like, really? It did not feel like the same house. When I think about it, like, because I find Tori to be not fun. Like, I'm just like, oh my God, it's the same house. This house seems so lively and exciting and fun. And like, I want to hang out with these people. And the other seasons, I don't have that same feeling and same vibes. Yeah. Totally different vibes. Totally. Uh, Tatiana wants to know what's Laurel's doctoral degree, degree in. I guess veterinary medicine, I guess. Would be yeah. my guess. Either that or um, maybe Spanish. I don't know. I know she took Spanish, like majored. I don't know if she's a doctorate. Um, so Victoria, Victoria, Tina, and Verona and Kara are all talking about the stars. I like that Kara is in with this group um, because I don't know if she was really friends with them back in the day, but it's nice that she feels a little bit of kinship with them. And it seems like she's kind of working with them a little bit a little bit yeah, i feel like i feel like kara didn't even really cross paths with them too much um like i don't how many seasons has kara done with rachel and tina has she actually done maybe anything? none like, no she, she did, did a... with rachel she was on uh battle of the the axes too yeah two yeah, so she might have done one or two. Like Veronica, she did a couple with later on in Veronica's career. But um, yeah, I don't think they were ever like that closely connected um, in the couple seasons she would have done with them. So yeah, I guess they're saying X is, is X one. Is one. Wait, who was Kara with? Abram? Why am I she was with one? Abram for either one or two. I can't remember which one. They were right. Uh, and Rachel was with Anissa. Yeah, Anissa. I remember that. Was Kara even on that one? Who was she? Maybe she was with. She was she with had Abram with for Abe. one of them. Yeah. Okay, people are saying, yeah, Abram. Yeah. I just don't remember if it was one or two, but I, like Tina, I don't know if Kara has ever done a season with Tina because Tina was off Tina, for a long since, time. What, the dual, dual two, two, right? Yeah, yeah, so that was before Kara. And then Veronica like would have done like. Dirty 30 and vendettas, but um, yeah, they definitely weren't close by any means. No. And like, we see, keep on seeing the scene where they're all in the bathtub with Abram. So I'm wondering if there was like any bad blood with like Tikara getting with Abram at one point, you know? I, don't I know. feel like now, I feel like, I feel like that they would not care about that. But that was pretty um, funny that they actually showed that clip. <laughs> That's something they would never show on the main show. Right? Now. Like, it's funny. It happened on the main show, but they would never show it now. It's so annoying. Show us the fun stuff. Uh, so Cam does ask Jasmine about Ayana. And Cam says that she's uh, has a love-annoyed relationship with her, which is funny. Um, Jasmine seems to have a little bit of beef with Ayana. Again, I don't fully remember what went down. Is it just that she's annoying and a bit polarizing to to live with? Ayana, I'm assuming that's I'm assuming that's mostly the case. And and in general, like stirring things up, I feel like. The last season they were on together, Ayana was like definitely stirring up a lot of fights. Um, <laughs> I I know about Salad Gate. I don't know if Cam knows about Salad Gate. <laughs> Whose salad was it again? Jody. Uh, Jody's. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think. She, oh man. Yes, she is. Yeah, Cam, Cam is, is so good socially. So such a good social player on the show. So they are going to the daily challenge. It's called Car Sick. The teams, they're going to be playing in teams of four, I believe. And I think there's one team of three. Um, so basically there's all these bag bags, these suitcases with stickers on them on top of a vehicle that's going to be suspended and spinning around while they're listening to a, a radio 
broadcaster saying different things where they have to figure out which suitcase it is and there's an equation to figure out what these suitcases this was also a very road rules-esque challenge and the end puzzle because um, after they open up all the find the combinations with the equations inside is a puzzle piece that they have to put together and it's the road rules emblem uh it's really throwing it back there was also another reference to diem here um in like one part of the pieces it was like carpe diem and then like one of the other pieces was brown which is diem's last name oh. um so i figure that was definitely on purpose as well like a, a shout out to dm there so we got basically we got two dm shout outs i'm kind of surprised they didn't like show like a clip of her maybe uh or s bring up her name but um i did i did notice that um yeah there was another dm shout out in that uh challenge i did not notice that at all but i'll probably i'll go back and look actually because i want i want to see that um but yeah love the homage to dm homage to road rules uh, all all the homages is great i'm into it so basically people aren't very good at math this was harder math than they usually give them though not gonna lie uh, some of the equations were larger numbers whether it was like you know four digit numbers adding or subtracting four digit numbers uh one of them was dividing by itself so it was it was pretty easy but uh the, the equations were harder than they have been in the main show where it was like you know, yeah 872 plus eight i mean i don't even know that <laughs> oh my god yeah, i wrote that down they're like who couldn't get it avery r, r, and, and, a, r and avery, and well, avery goes, said, or, or is it or is it 879 i, I don't know <laughs> What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. Even I if know. you can't do the simple math, just literally yes, count. Yes. You don't even have to do math. It's addition. Or just like, count. Or they could have just like put the number on the, the the whatever the thing is and just go up eight little clicks and it would come to the zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, anyways, uh, they were really, really not good, but there was, okay. So the first team was team blue. That was Derek, Jasmine, Janelle, and Ryan. They weren't very fast at all. Janelle wasn't feeling very confident in this. Um, even though she is really confident in her math ability, uh, she wasn't good at this at all. Light blue team was Kifla. Um, this is when we learned about his road rules tattoo, Ayana, Rachel, and Flora. They're pretty fast. Um, after Ayana doing the running man and dancing, Kifla doing the splits, they're doing the kid and play dance. Like the, their vibes and energy was was great. I know Ayana can be quite uh, frustrating at times, but when she's happy and dancing, um, I was into it for sure. Um, I wrote down what's the beef with Ayana and Janelle. Uh, so I still we still don't know. Can someone just remind us if you guys know in the chat? Cause like, it's a beef. It's a big beef. And like, they couldn't have crossed paths too much on the show either. Cause I feel like, when was it Ayana's last season? Well, it was, well, it was all with her. Too. When with they her. both were in the final together. So and Ayana quit. I know. Like you quit. Anyways. I know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there was more that was going on because Janelle, remember she was saying her back hurt and all this stuff. So maybe like is she annoyed Ayana that we just didn't see the previous season. Yeah, time? maybe it's just more Ayana not liking her um demeanor. Remember how she talked about how like Jody was like privileged or whatever? So maybe she kind of like lumped her into that and sort of like ha she has her own like animosity, whatever, for whatever reason. Janelle is that person that reminds her of certain, who knows? Okay, so Gem Beauty here is saying Ayana oh. and Janelle were on all seasons too, but apparently Ayana said something about Janelle marrying a white guy. Okay. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Steven says that Jemmy said on her podcast that she heard from Jasmine that a big fight happened in the house where Ay Ayana told Janelle that she wasn't black enough. Okay. Ugh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I, I figured it was like something that was like more intense than what we got because uh yeah if that's true like what the speculation is i could see them not wanting to show that and like have people like hating on ayana when 
she is battling cancer. So yeah, unfortunately that makes sense where if she took it to a, a bad place like that. And then also like, you can see why Leroy was probably extra frustrated. It's like, not only is she being annoying, but maybe he already was privy to like some extra things she had said about Janelle or whatever. And was like, that's not cool. You know, cause Leroy's always going to stand up for and cam. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is starting to make a little bit more sense now. Um, hopefully maybe she'll do some exit press Janelle. And so we can hear a little bit more about what actually went down. Uh, do you think she'll go on the Challenge Mania podcast again? Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. I could see that. I hope so. I hope so. So the green team is Ace, Kara, Avery, and Brad. This is Team Dum Dum. I said, oh, Lord. I'm like, 872 plus 8 equals question mark? <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, orange team was Leroy, Cam, Veronica, and Brandon. Uh, Leroy was practicing math, and he was being pretty quick on some still basic, but more challenging basic math, and he was able to get some of these numbers. So good on you, Leroy, doing what we always say to do is practice shit you're not good at that you have in your control to be better at. So um, I'm happy that they showed him doing this, and hopefully this is kind of a precursor to him doing well in the, the final. Yeah, I hope so. I think Leroy uh, is like definitely like a favorite, if not the favorite, right? I, I know first episode he didn't do that great, but it's good though. I, Humble I him. I feel like this is Leroy's season to lose, in my opinion. And, and him even saying it's a perspective change. And I totally relate to that of like not putting yourself in that position of like, no, I can be that number one. Like he never really believed it himself. So how is it ever going to happen? You know, because there's always like you know bigger dogs, bigger personalities in the game with him, and so I, he is the top dog here for sure. He could easily take this win. Uh, oh, Magno here is reminding us that Leroy practiced swing first. Yep, and now he's shown that he has worked on his math skill. Yep. So that's I, I always respect that when people are like, I can take this into my hands. I can control the situation a little bit. And he's doing that. So good on them. So the peach team was Teve, Steve, and Adam. Um, the yellow was Nicole, Tony, Laurel, and Jay. Uh, Jay is on fire, apparently. He is able to do these math equations really, really quickly and easily. So the top two teens were yellow. So that was Nicole, Tony, Laurel, and Jay. Surprisingly, Laurel and Nicole were able to work decently well together, even though they were kind of working separately, but together. And then light blue, which was Derek, Jasmine. Oh, sorry. No, just kidding. Uh, who's the other winners? Who are the other winners? Top two is yellow. I wrote down light blue, but oh, light blue. Kifla, um, Ayana, Rachel, and Floral. But the yellow team was the one that won. Um, and the two slowest were peach and blue. So Steve, Tina, and Adam, and Derek, Jasmine, Janelle, and Ryan. So this is who they're going to be choosing for to go in the loser's bracket. And there's only there's not as many women to choose from. There's only going to be Tina, Jasmine, and Janelle to choose two of them to go down into elimination. So right after the the, uh, the daily, Janelle goes in the house telling everybody that she wants a star. She wants to be going, going in, voted in. I wrote down in this moment that I think it's because she wants to go against Jasmine and she thinks that she has a decent chance of coming back against Jasmine. That well, was my original thought. I figured she thought either of them would be fine. Like I thought, I'd be kind mind, of scared of Tina maybe in a physical thing because I feel like she has size on her. Well, yes and no, but T I mean it depends. But like Tina's a has a gotten a little more soft in terms of that. I think in her years, and I feel like yeah, she probably would prefer to go against Jasmine. Higher chance of success, maybe against Jasmine in her mind. But I think she genuinely was like, it doesn't matter who they pick. This is a good chance for me to get it. If it has to be one of three, I have a high chance of going in anyway. This way, I'll make less. In her mind, she's like, good strategy. Less people will be mad because I'm not trying to fight to get one of them in. I'm saying, I want to go in, and you guys pick the other person. And she was trying that. Obviously, it, it literally the complete opposite effect. Um, so she should have said nothing. But like, how was she to know that Ayana was going to completely make, you know, do what she did? So... 
yeah, I feel for her for sure. Yeah, I, I actually think it was definitely smart to like go in now because like it's only three people. It's not the strongest competition. Like, sure, like you could try to avoid elimination, wait, wait another few weeks, but then like you could potentially be forced to go in against Kara or Rachel or Laurel. And it's like, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, Tina like might be like solid physically, but like I'll take my chances there and also have a 50% chance against again uh, at going against Jasmine. So I think the, that idea was right, but like from there, it just like went all downhill uh, mostly yeah. due to Ayana. Well, Cam wants Laurel to go against Nicole. That's not an option, but that, that would be great to get one of the two of them out of there because Nicole is decently strong and we know that Laurel is definitely strong. So uh, I would want them both to go against each other and get rid of, hopefully, Nicole myself. I wrote down Tony crying in a confessional. Was he crying? I don't even remember this right now. At the club? I don't remember. I don't know. Oh, was club. that when he was... Yeah, yeah. He was talking about how his uh, like oh, family was in a hurricane. In a hurricane. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, him. I, I think his wife... I don't think he mentioned this, but I know his wife was, like, badly injured or his fiance was badly injured in the hurricane. Um, right. And she was hospitalized for a bit. So it was like pretty serious um, and their house was destroyed. So that all happened. It's weird. I remember that a while back, but I guess this three, film- Two, was three years, ago. I guess. Yeah. Was, I guess it was probably the year before they filmed this or so. Um, Louisiana says, what did we think about Laurel covering your ears and Nicole was talking? Well, it was really funny. They're in, they're doing their little confessionals after they won. And Nicole was trying to talk to Laurel. And she's just like, la, 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 la. <laughs> like, I thought it was definitely childish, but it was the perfect way to deal with Nicole is, is like that. Cause if you're fighting with her, it just doesn't work. But just being like ridiculous and childish, it yeah. gets under her skin better. So I liked it. I'm in. Um, Ayana decides to tell everybody that Janelle says that she is going to go, that she said that she wanted to go against Jasmine. And this is a lie. She says it's a lie. And Kara does go and tell Jasmine that this is what's being said. So Jasmine's going to go and clear up the situation because she's never going to step back from a potential fight. If there's and something Jasmine's going to do, it's going to clarify. It's going to talk to the person. <laughs> she's so not afraid of confrontation. <laughs> She's like, got your eyes on it. Um, you know, it was a believable lie. Yes, it was. And it, I don't know how Janelle got caught up in, like, it's just such a weak lie. Like, it, it, it doesn't even matter. Just be like, I didn't say it, but she's just, like, the fact that she got riled up for it, it just doesn't help her at all. And I wish that she just, like, just. Yeah, it would have been better that. if she was like, no, I, nope, didn't say that. So, a, a, according to someone else in the room, according to Leroy and Cam, Janelle did actually say she wanted Jasmine. Oh. Um, so yeah, Cam and Leroy confirmed that uh, they're doing like a like YouTube or like podcast uh, now oh. as well. Okay, and uh, it's that. behind a paywall, a pay oh. a paywall. But there was a clip of it, and they were saying that yeah, Janelle definitely said to a, a number of people that uh, she wanted Jasmine, but uh, it got, like, Ayana caught wind of that, and then she just told everyone, and ja and Janelle had only told a couple people. Um, so... Well, that makes more sense as to why yeah. she... Because she was caught in the lie, basically, and that's yeah. more of why... It makes more sense as to why she let it get under her skin that much, because she was trying to play the game, and then she kind of got caught lying okay well that's well i mean who cares if you want to go against jasmine there's only two people there I'd be like who do you want i'm like i'll take jasmine for this one like i don't yeah, know like a better response would have been like when it gets accused a, a good a response could have been there's three options and i'm offering myself up as one of them there are two other options and it's up to you guys whether or not I think I ha might have a better chance physically against Jasmine. It doesn't mean that I want to even go in. It just means that there's three of us and two of us are going to go in. So, like, she could have played it like that. 
But yeah, the, clearly like her getting that amount. I mean, yeah, I guess if she did tell some people, then that's why she got a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think like like similarly, like the best thing she could have said is like, hey, I don't want to go against Jasmine, but like there's no one else I can go. There's only two people I can go against. So I have to go against someone. And I, yeah, like you said, Michelle, like I'm willing to go in, but I I don't have the luxury of choosing one of 15 gr- women uh, I can only choose one of two, or you can only vote one of two if you're going to vote for me. So, would you rather Tina? Like, put it put it on other people. And like, I'm, realistically, like I, I was honestly surprised Tina got voted in because I thought Tina had more friends than Jasmine. So, even like friend wise, I would have, I wouldn't have wanted to piss people off by saying Tina. Uh, but I mean, obviously, it seems like Jasmine is better insulated than. I would have thought. Yeah. Um, so we do see the moment where Avery is talking with Tina and Tina is basically saying like, Hey, you know, you'll get further in the game if you're on my side. And if you're not on my side, you know, kind of just trying to have Avery not want to put her down in the sand. Veronica, like, I think she like knows her friend, but definitely says that she doesn't think that she's being so great politically. And so this will come back around. Uh, Tina, wait, well, then we see um, Janelle says, Tina, you stay, I'll leave. And she starts to cry. And Brandon thinks that Ayana is is uh, is bullshit for like how she was stirring up all this stuff. Even um, Brad was saying that Ayana did, that Ayana was lying and she was supporting Janelle. So people were coming to Janelle's defense. Uh, but when we get to the actual nominations, we see that Kara goes for Tina and Janelle because she knows Jasmine. Kifla, Tina and Janelle. Flora does Tina and Janelle. Um, I'm surprised that Flora did Tina. Just for the fact that um, I feel like they're from the same era, like she, they wouldn't have known each other, right? Maybe they don't like each other, but I'm surprised. Uh, Veronica does Jasmine and Janelle, Cam, Janelle and Tina, Leroy, Tina and Janelle, Rachel, Janelle and Jasmine, Brandon, Janelle and Tina, Brad, Jasmine and Janelle, um, Avery, Tina and Janelle. She she doesn't like being bullied. I'm like, oh boy, (laughs) problem. And Ayana says Janelle and I didn't write down. And then the two hour monologue. Oh, right. (laughs) The two hour monologue. Okay. So what I died is that they started playing Moonlight Sonata, which I played in like grade six piano. Like, and like, I know how to play that song. And it's like, I, you know, it's like a song that you just played all the time when you were a kid practicing. Like, dun, 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 dun. I like, I know that song so well. And the fact that she just could not get out. I, I wish I wrote down her monologue, but I, I didn't. Matthew, did you did you write down the, the, the best parts of this monologue? No, I didn't. <laughs> but it was pretty, pretty funny. Uh yeah, that this was like the best moment of the episode, and then like Leroy like chiming in, and then I, Ayana's like, "Don't don't interrupt me. I'm trying to like respect everyone's time and Ace's time too." And it's like, didn't you just go on for like forty five minutes? <laughs> and Leroy was so confused. Um, that was awesome. He's just, he's just Leroy, just like, who are you voting for? And like, you think it would just like whip her into like. And then she's like voice. reclaiming my time. I'm like re- reclaiming what time? You got your time you already. You just did so much time, and then you're saying Ace needs to talk. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, Leroy was not <laughs> having it. He storms <laughs> off, making eyes at the camera person. Apparently, the camera person just like, oh my god, like this is taking <laughs> so long. Um, I would have loved to see maybe a little bit more of like a time lapse of like her talking because like we could tell it was long but if it was actually 45 minutes like i would want to see that a little bit more because yeah she's she's wild she's wild um so i thought the confessional with cam and leroy when she's like i would rather he was like i'd rather um stare at paint drying for three years and cam would rather eat a, a denim jacket <laughs> Then listen to Ayana. Um, and then Leroy would rather put toothpicks underneath his toenails and kick a wall. 
than listen to Ayana. What would you guys rather do than listen to Ayana? Well, I, I would I, rather I, listen. I'll go ahead and go. I'd rather listen to Ayana talk for an hour than listen to Nicole talk for an hour. That's true. That's fair. Facts. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I just listened to Bananas talk for an hour before this, and I would rather listen to Ayana talk for an hour than uh, Bananas. <laughs> and I have to listen to Bananas talk almost every season for an hour, every episode. So uh, I would love to listen to Ayana. I, I, I feel like I would find her very entertaining. <laughs> I mean, I think if I was there, I would just feel like... I'd just be so enamored by the fact that she's a real person. Like, what are you talking about? Jorge here says that his favorite line is, I'm like a grocery store. You will eat good, but you have to pay. <laughs> uh, I, I might have to transcribe that. It's quite poet poetic. So in the end, nominated is going to be Janelle and Tina. But then Janelle, she quits. She quits. Like, I get it. Ayana's polarizing and she was targeting Janelle, but she's being so basic in her, her strategy of like bullying or, you know what I mean? Pushing her buttons. Like, come on, Janelle, you're, you're an adult enough to be able to handle a person like this. And so I was really disappointed that Janelle quit. I know some people in the chat were saying like, if, if it was about race and, and, and Ayana kind of pulling that into the conversation, I can understand not wanting to be, you know, be in that mental space to be around that. But like, I guess, like, I would have shut it down a long time ago and I wouldn't have let it affect me. I don't think. I just hate when people quit. I just hate it. Yeah, That's I also Sarah. don't think Ayana is long for this game because like she's clearly rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. So I can definitely also see a on my team. Thanks, guys. Actually, I'm fine with her on my team, but like, I see a scenario where like, when she's vulnerable on the next like women's day, like, I definitely see her getting voted in. Um, yeah. So like, I don't know, like if you're Janelle, like can you try to like live for like five days with her? Uh, like I get it. It's like probably very uncomfortable. Like I don't, we don't, we don't know exactly what was being said and done. Um, but yeah, it's tough to like quit, especially like if you're like someone like Janelle, like how many more chances do you have at playing the challenge? I, well, I, I saw a tweet or something, I think, of uh, Jasmine mentioning that there was a lot more as well with the fight and that wasn't seen and stuff. So, um. uh, Nicole, you're saying is uh, Stephen Legend, ha um, sorry, Legend has it that Ayana's speech lasted long past mandated worldwide quarantine. I would have rather caught COVID at that point. Girl, hush. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Angie. Um, so yeah, if you guys haven't seen it, we did do a little game over on Kiss My Cheeks TV a couple of weeks ago. It might have been even been a month ago now, um, where we talked about this cast and we had to relive all our favorite moments of this cast. So if you want to check that out, the link is somewhere. I think it's in my last video. You'll see the link. Um, hello, hello. Okay, so nominated, yes, is Janelle and Tina. Uh, Ayana thinks that her leaving is disrespectful. I have to agree. I have to agree. There's a lot of people. But for her to be the one to say it, I come know, on. I like, know. she did that. Like, and I get her being like, I, you know, but you did that. And then you're, and obviously everyone's in control of their own. Like, Janelle's an adult and Janelle's has the ability to rise above and be like, no, I'm staying and I'm going to just at least fight. And I wish she had, but like, also, I'm glad Tina still gets to be there, obviously. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. It, it, it just, for her to say that is very comical to me. I mean, like, it's disrespectful. Like, girl, are you talking about disrespect? All right. I mean, I agreed. But, like, so many people want to be on this show, and it sucks when people quit. What? Who's the sidekick? What is this? I don't I don't understand what this means. Um, Steven says there was also a sidekick, Ayana, who, who Jasmine will not name. So apparently, Ayana had, like, someone else oh, working. Oh, those, with like. Piping yeah. in. Yeah. Um, who would have been her sidekick? It wasn't a guy for sure. Hmm. If you guys know in the chat, let us know, please. Then uh kind of out of nowhere, we see Laurel and Nicole fighting. Um, and Nicole is yeah, that was a jump scare. Yeah, <laughs> to get her started. Was like, what's happening here? 
Uh, more to come, I'm sure. We get to the elimination and it's going to be cheat codes. Uh, to TJ opens up the option for people to go. To Wait, option. I don't know what for I was writing there. Laurel and so Laurel and Nicole then? have the option to go down. He said that um, at the beginning. And it's yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, like he basically just said, like, yeah, Janelle quits. But Laurel, Nicole, do either of you want to go down? And uh, they both said no, obviously. And yeah. so, yeah, it's cheat really. codes because Nicole definitely isn't great with like, I don't, but maybe she's okay with memorizing, but she's not good with with puzzles. So if it's any sort of puzzle type thing, because uh, basically you have to memorize and replicate whatever they're memorizing. Uh, we've seen Laurel not do super great with stuff like this. So I think it's it was, too much of a toss up. It's too much. There's too much of a what if factor. It was balls in. I think both of them would have said yes or any tug of war type thing. They both would have said yes. Uh, but a memorization thing where Tina is actually decent at puzzly type things. Yeah, I would have said no too. So Laurel says no, Nicole says no, and Tina automatically gets a star for surviving, but she has to steal it from a girl and paybacks a B. She chooses a Vary. Uh I'm here for it. I mean it's it's funny that that Rachel then thinks that somehow Tina's gonna keep this star. In what world is she keeping the star? <laughs> it's the first like First female elimination that she didn't even have to do, which is hilarious. And so <laughs> Tina, like, but obviously it's going to get stolen. All of them are going to get stolen back and forth. Like I, I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Uh, obviously. Unless Cara people, keeps winning. It, uh, yeah. Uh, but, and Tina could win. She does win some things sometimes. Um, I think though, maybe with having this kind of alliance that they're building, people might be scared to steal that star. And so they don't want to ruffle the Alliance's feathers. So yeah, that's, we'll see that, if you know true. going to want to come, come back for that star because it'll be taken right back from her. You know what I mean? So do you think if someone like say Kara goes into an elimination and loses, does the person that beat her just automatically get her star then? I'm, I assume that's how it will work. Yeah. But... I, uh, yeah, I would. Oh, if the person that's going down has a star, I would assume it just goes to the person that beats them. Oh, or or they or maybe they still get to steal a star. Maybe their star gets forfeited once they go down in the elimination ring, and then but, they have to steal from somebody else. But there has to be six in play. Yeah, I feel like they would just take the one from whoever they, they probably beat. just take it from them. Jorge yeah. says yes. Okay. 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 I wonder if um, I wonder like if you're. If you're in the house and you're stealing a star, do you think people are going to be like, well, I don't want to steal a star from Kara because she's like a massive threat and I don't want her coming after me? Or do you think they will steal from her to take a, take a, take a chance that she doesn't get to go to the final? I, I wonder how that's going to play out. I wonder too. I think the smart thing would be to let her be comfortable with her star, For as try as and as work well. with her, and, and then, then snipe it at the end. Close to the end try to figure out how to snipe it. But that's obviously difficult to do because it really just depends on what the, the dailies daily. are. If, if there's a daily that's not in her wheelhouse or whatever, but like you don't want to take her thing too early because she's going to win another daily and take it back. So from you. I'm guessing they'll change the format towards the end. Cause if not like someone that's a huge threat is just going to get fucked at the end because they're going to have yeah. a star and it's going to get stolen right before the final. So I imagine they'll change that so that doesn't happen because that would be kind of unfair. Or it would be like, hey, like Kara, Rachel, Laurel, you all have stars. So like one of you is going to have to go into elimination to protect your star. Uh, otherwise, yeah. someone else is just going to steal it. So that would, would actually be kind of interesting if people were protecting their star. So Stephen here is saying if both in the elimination already have a star and win, the winner get, gifts the loser star to someone else. That's fun. So, well, I'm curious how this whole star thing is going to actually shake out, if they are going to change the format, like you're saying here, Matthew. Uh, do we have an MVP for this episode? Uh, one for both episodes? Well, I would uh, say, ooh, oh. We'll do two. Let's do two. I would say Kef, Kefla episode. and Flora for episode one. <laughs> and I would say um, for episode two, 
who provided, who provided the most? I mean, Ayana did provide, but <laughs> I don't think that deserves MVP, but I mean, I'm not, uh, she was probably the central focus. Um, I'm going to go Kara for episode one for me. Oh, right. True. Um, just because like her like return oh, was like very grand and like obviously she dominated the challenge. TJ was happy to see her. She seems in like really good spirits true. here. So uh, true, I would true. go Kara for the, uh, I guess we'll do like one man, one woman. Uh, it could be Ayana, yeah. I guess. Who's the I guy for was... episode two? Or, Are the yeah, guys who's not even bringing it? I don't even remember any guys in this episode. Well, no, Leroy. I I did enjoy Leroy in the second episode. As Actually, well. his confessional there. Yeah, he and him, <laughs> like walking out on <laughs> the nomination meeting, um, and having a good confessional there. Okay, we can give that to Laura Leroy. Yeah. So Leroy and Diana. I know it's kind of like a negative MVP, but like. Hey, she definitely like gave everyone a lot to talk about. Uh, so she, she got someone to quit. And you know what? She's going to have an explosive fight with Jasmine next week. Yeah, you know what, what? what more can we ask for? I mean, we, we, we want for? drama. Yeah, That's like, right. and it, it, as you said, it's like the old part of like the old challenge drama was honestly so much gaslighting, so much like stuff like this like it it is reminiscent of that honestly <laughs> loved it loved it well this is our first two episodes or i think they're going to be one episode each week now so um these will obviously be a little bit shorter and we'll be doing them on wednesday at some time um after 6 p.m likely do you have anything about this episode that we've missed that you guys want to talk about or this new season or anything from any pods that you might have listened before we sign out off oh okay. yeah you Wait, you said Car wait, Kara is apparently on Yeah, so Kara Maria was just on Banana's podcast. Um I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Like I'm guess I know that like Tori and Anissa ones are like pre-recorded. I assume Banana's probably pre-recorded too. Um but yeah, I was it popped up in my feed and I was shocked that Kara was talking with Banana. So I mean, hey, like fingers crossed, maybe that means Kara has a few friends on season 40 or at least she's civil with people. But uh, I listened to most of it. It was a pretty good listen, more just like reminiscing. But um, yeah, uh, I would recommend that one. Cara and is Bananas. It, is it clear that it was recorded before they started filming 40 or it's not clear? They didn't like specify timeline. It seems like I got the sense that they were like hinting at like being on 40. So I wonder if this was like right before they left. Hmm. um so yeah because like, it was clear like Kara said like they made a joke like oh yeah I said that Kara's like I said that I would do the podcast like under one condition which like we can't mention here so I oh. wonder if it was like oh like keep me safe on 40 or something <laughs> right which Fun. I'm sure he won't do oh they recorded in the challenge house huh oh so maybe it was pre-recorded, but earlier on in, the in season. season 40. Interesting. Well, I'm going to actually go and listen to that because I, I feel like this season, the post-show like interviews are going to be so, so much more interesting. I didn't really watch a lot of them for 39 because I just was like, Meh, I don't care. But yeah. I care. I want to I want to hear. Hopefully Janelle does go on and talks about her experience. Uh, she was spilled the tea last time she was on about how the final went down and how it was seemingly unfair. So hopefully she will be a little bit transparent and let us know what actually went down with Ayana. Yeah. Yeah. I, apparently Jemmy posted a podcast um, and she... With her and who? It was with somebody interesting, right? Well, she has. I think she has one with Frank Sweeney coming out tomorrow, That's, which yeah. that should be really fun. I might, um, yeah, I might buy that and take notes and then recap it. I think she does it for free. You don't have to. Uh, you oh, that's a free one. Okay. Yeah, but she, Jemmy did one today where she was talking a bit about Laurel and Kara. So I might listen to that tonight. Oh, I have to, to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, just listen to sweet Jemmy's voice in your ear. <laughs> but I am very excited to hear her talk to Frank tomorrow. Absolutely. 
Well, I'm so happy to have talked to both of you today about this new season. It's finally here. All Stars 4 is in full effect. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you everybody here in the chat you guys are amazing please do us a favor and like this video um leave us a comment what should we talk about in the comments today um i guess maybe about the format do we think that there's going to be a format change later on the season and if so what do you think it could be only speculation no spoilers um and only speculation no spoilers how does cyrus enter the game is he coming next week is that who's coming in why is that happening? What's going on? Let us know your thoughts. And how long are Laurel and Nicole going to be in the house together? Okay, yeah, what's the over-under? <laughs> over-under, over-under three, ep four episodes together. What's over-under that? Anyways, thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.